Hey everyone, welcome back. Alright, Fulman Prime. I've been getting a lot of questions about this one. I can tell you that not much has changed builds-wise compared to normal Fulman. We can go over what has changed and how much stronger it has become, as well as checking what build ideas work and which ones don't. Fulman is still a very, very strong pick, albeit overshadowed by Incarnon guns these days. But if you haven't used Fulman before, it's basically a smaller hitbox 10 at Archiplasmor that can crit properly. It retains the infinite body punch through and lack of proper headshot multiplier. More importantly, it is a rifle, meaning it uses rifle mods. It carries forced impact within the first 12 meters just like you'd expect, meaning amazing slash procs from internal bleeding. Yes, fire rate is low enough to get the 2 times effect for 70% chance the procs slash. So what has actually changed? The big one is the firing sound. Honestly, I prefer the quieter, electric sounding shot. Now the shotgun mode is a lot punchier. The full auto mode I believe got a tiny bit louder, but that's it. Anyways, one of the things you'll notice is the falloff change. It's only 4 meters difference, from 10 to 20 meters to 12 to 24 meters. But the normal engagement distance of guns is usually around 15 meters or higher, so you will really feel it. The shot disappears after 24 meters, granting 9 meters of fighting range beyond 15, instead of regular Fulman granting only 5 meters of fighting range extra. Terminal velocity can increase this further if needed to 19.2 to 38.4 meters falloff. It loses two-thirds of its total damage at the edge of its range, which is still pretty good. For another nice quality of life change, the reload of rate of Fulman has gone from 1 to 0.7. This is a somewhat complicated stat on battery weapons that both affects the ammo regen rate and regen delay. Basically, Fulman Prime both regens ammo faster and has a slightly shorter delay before it begins. Magazine has also gone up from 60 to 80, while shotgun still uses only 10 ammo. Fire rate is unchanged. The big benefits of Fulman Prime are primarily all of these quality of life feel good changes rather than actual DPS. For damage stats, shotgun mode went up by 10%, status went up from 16 to 22%, so we do 1.1 times damage and inflict 1.37 times status. If you run a dot based build from natural status procs, that's 1.51 times more dot DPS. The only problem with this is Fulman does not shoot that fast, nor is the shot that big in hitbox size, so this has limited use I'll show later. The auto mode has gone from 28 to 34% crit chance, and this means critical delay is enough for to pass 100% crit and fully benefit from crit damage scaling. Being a full auto weapon though, this is not as important. Still a solid damage bump and on a fully modded build results in 1.21 times damage. The full auto mode retains some issues we'll get into later. So how about actual builds? Well, Aseta hasn't changed much there. We still have the same main two builds for shotgun mode, then an experimental third one, but let's look at the infinite scaling first. Viral internal bleeding. This is no different than your typical viral hunt munitions kind of gun. Except we have force impact procs within the first 12 meters, scaling with projectile speed mods, so we can use internal bleeding. 70% of impact procs are converted into slash, meaning 70% of your shots within 12 meters will slash. If you want even more reliable slash, terminal velocity will increase the force impact range to 19.2 meters. As a battery weapon, full mini easily remains under the 2.5 fire rate requirement for double effect. Even with Wisp's buffs, the half scaling of internal bleeding is still 35% proc chance, versus Hunter Mumu's 30%, assuming you crit. Crimed Bane double dips the slash procs for 2.4 times more damage, and of course we have standard crit mons with crit delay for more consistent yellows. Viral is made with PCR and Malignant since this allows raw damage viral to kill weaker fauna without relying on slash procs. Status chance is already sourced from Malignant and Gun CO. More importantly, Gun CO is multiplicative on Fulman Prime Shotgun Mode, meaning every status proc adds 80% final damage. This weapon can inflict impact, electric, viral, and slash, letting it independently gain up to plus 320% final damage. Base damage will be sourced from Merciless and is easy to stack due to slash procs even without base damage at the start. We have an alternative corrosive internal bleeding build. What is this build for? For base steel path. 
Foeman Prime is strong enough to kill with Slash even without Viral at base steel path while retaining corrosive damage to one-shot weaker fodder. The corrosive damage is also amazing for handling Acolytes, who otherwise shrug off Slash procs from Arcaplasmor type weapons with ease. This build will destroy them much more easily, otherwise everything else remains the same. We still have multiplicative gun CO, Banes to double dip the Slash procs as needed for 2.4 times more damage, crits, and multi-shot. It is up to you on whether you want to run Merciless or Deadhead here. As Merciless does cut down the battery regen delay even further, whereas Deadhead gives more headshot damage and longer lasting stacks, which can be very handy against Acolytes. The third build is an experimental grouping DPS build. It's meant to be either pure electric slash DPS, with slash building arcane stacks to get electric chain DPS going, or gas DPS. There's one problem with this. Foeman Prime's hitbox is not exactly big enough to hit most of the crowd. It can only hit roughly one third of an ensnare group at a time, and it fails to approach 100% status. This makes it rather inconsistent at killing groups this way, be it electric or gas, with slash. It takes three shots to consistently kill, and only gas can sometimes do it in 2. At that point, you might as well stick to the viral internal bleeding build which can also do it in 2-3 to three shots. Usually when I test electric gas like this is to hopefully kill in less shots than a corrosive or viral slash build. Feel free to play with it if you want, but this underperforms in my eyes. What if you want to play around with a full auto mode? While it has been buffed to do roughly 1.21 times damage, it retains the same core issue as before, no innate punch through. It has innate electric damage, saving a slot on corrosive DPS for Prime Shred, but your typical scaling Viral Hunter Munitions build cannot fit it. This means for endurance content, your viral slash setup is really limited by how long it takes to kill each enemy. This build is identical to the shotgun mode, but uses hunter munitions instead of internal bleeding, since the auto mode has no impact procs. Honestly, I would recommend just not using the viral slash setup for full auto, just stick to viral slash shotgun for everything if you want scaling damage. On the other hand, if you want to fiddle around at base steel path, a corrosive hunter munitions build actually works. This is because the innate electric allows us to save a slot for making corrosive. This frees up a slot for prime shred so we can mow down crowds and retain hunter munitions for tankier units. You literally cannot make viral hunter munitions with punch throw in this weapon, don't even bother unless you're using nourish. But then the viral comes from nourish and not modding it on the weapon for the full auto. Galvanize aptitude scales from Puncture, Corrosive, and Slashier for plus 240% more base damage. It is only multiplicative on the shotgun mode and is additive like normal on full auto. This is why the full auto mode feels so much weaker. Bane buffs still increase corrosive DPS by 1.55 times and the slash procs for 2.4 times. This can rip acolytes apart decently well and is a legitimate full auto build for base steel path. Take your pick between Merciless vs Deadhead as both can work here. And there's our Fulman Prime, most notably a quality of life update. The DPS changes are not as significant this time. While they all got better on the battlefield, the full auto mode still does not fix the lack of mod slots issue outside of corrosive DPS, and is thus relegated to base steel path only since punch through is so important. The shotgun mode continues to excel with multiplicative gun CO and forced impact procs scaling into internal bleeding for massive slash procs. A comfort weapon with better range, better magazine, and faster battery regen and less regen delay. This is what I really wanted from the Foeman though. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've been doing with Duviri. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You won't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time!